a case that's been breaking all over the news um, for the past couple weeks is the Madeline Soto case out of Florida. I briefly mentioned it last episode. Um, I think at that time she might have still been missing. Um, but some things have transpired. And her kind of stepfather, her mom and this man weren't married. Uh, it was her boyfriend. But, um, you know, the mom sometimes refers to him as a stepfather. And he's been around for some years. Um, has been arrested for basically sexually abusing a child. Um, oh. And it is believed that Ma Maddie was that child um, for good reason. Well, yeah. um, her, they didn't mention her name in the document. Um, they, but they did put a birthday that matches her birthday. And what's in that document is absolutely horrible. So I want to give an overview of, of what has transpired in the Madeline Soto case so far um, so we can get caught up to speed and then talk about how her mom is now being, you know, looked at like maybe she knew more than she was letting on. Um, and I understand why that question is being asked. Though I hope it isn't true. Um, so, February 26, Madeline Soto was reported missing around 8 p.m. After her mom went to pick her up from school and she never came out. She wasn't there. Um, her mom says that she went and drove around um, thinking that because her mother had, like, her work was nearby that maybe... Maddie like walked to her mom's work or something, uh, Maddie's grandma, um, and went back to the school. The school was closed. Um, so she contacted police. She found out that Madeline had never shown up to school that day. Um, she never even arrived. And the school she was at was Hunter's Creek Middle School. So apparently the mom's boyfriend he told this he told this story and so did the mom in interviews online that they took her to school that morning and dropped her off at a church that was kind of a ways away like um they yeah but that's how the mom says it that's where this weirdness comes into play the mom says we but then later says, well, my boyfriend dropped her off at school that morning. Um, and apparently Maddie was embarrassed or something of his car. Um, that's what he claimed. And that he dropped her off at a church down the street from her school and that she walked that way. Um, but she didn't. She never arrived at school. And her mom acted like this church was very close um, you know, I've, from the maps I've seen, it's not that close. Um, it, it really isn't like, I wouldn't feel comfortable dropping a kid off, you know, a couple blocks from school. Like, what's the point of that? Dropping them off blocks away from school. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. How old was Madeline again? Uh, she was 13. She had literally just turned 13. Okay. I mean, I've never had a 13 year old. I, I don't think that I would do that either, but I mean, 13, I guess you're starting to grow up a little bit, but still that's kind of strange. He, he, yeah. Let me drop you off way away from your school. Yeah. Why even entertain, even if that were true, because it's not true. We know that's not true now. Even if it were true that she's embarrassed of your car, why even entertain that? Say, well, this is my car. Get over it. Don't be so shallow. You know, mm -hmm. it's just a car. So, like you got to teach your kids values, though. None of that is true. You guys, none of that is true. Um, but we'll we'll talk if about the mom that. said it. Then it sounds like she should be under fire. Yeah. So. Um, then the next day, February 27th, the Orange County Sheriff's Office, which this is all taking place in Orange County, Florida, which is like Orlando. 
Um, they issued a release about her disappearance, though it was not an Amber Alert because they said it didn't meet the requirements. Um, asking for information about her whereabouts. Then, the day after that, February 28th, a big search commenced. Um, everybody started looking for her. The sheriff's office was leading it. Um, Orange County Sheriff off, off, b -b -b Orange County Sheriff John Mina said the de deputies accessed Soto's phone, finding information that indicated she wanted to live in the woods when she turned 13 years old. And her birthday was on February 22nd. So she told a friend that when she turned 13, she wanted to go live in the woods. Okay. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the, the officers, like the search started focusing kind of on like wooded areas. Now, Florida is a very dangerous, swampy terrain with alligators and venomous snakes and all kinds of things, you know, tons of mosquitoes and bugs that you don't want to come into contact with. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't know why you would go live in the woods in Florida. Uh, there, it's not even really woods. It's just swamp. Yeah. Um, but it's an indicator that there was problems at home, right? Yeah. Uh, but her mom said in interviews that Maddie was super happy after her birthday and loved all her gifts, but her mom wasn't there at her birthday. Her mom had to work. So her boyfriend and all of her mom's family celebrated Maddie's birthday and her mom wasn't there. But when her mom got home that night, Maddie told her all about it and she said she was super happy and Maddie went straight to bed that she didn't even get on her phone or laptop or anything. She went straight to bed um, and she said she went through Maddie's phone and laptop and there was nothing there like she was talking to anybody or planning anything or anything like that. Yeah. Um, so ultimately the search amounted to nothing. Um, but the sheriff's office announced that Stearns, the boyfriend of the mother had been, was the prime suspect and he was arrested because they found disturbing images when they searched his phone. And conveniently, he had accidentally factory reset his phone the day she disappeared. But they recovered all the nastiness on his phone. And in the affidavit, you guys, yep. it's horrible. Which it is... is images of him abusing what seems to be Maddie. Um, and like full, like full on, like full on. It's, it's, it's pretty bad. Um, and it appears it had been going on for multiple years. Really, really, really sad. Um, so yeah, he was arrested, but he was, even though he's considered the prime suspect, he was never arrested on charges of like have, having anything to do with her disappearance until they announced um, that they believe she wasn't alive anymore, that they had found video of him Dumping her cell phone, or not her cell phone, her laptop and backpack in a dumpster mm. behind the apartment that they lived in, and a video of him with her in the car, and they believed she wasn't alive anymore, like in the passenger seat. Right? Dude. Yeah. So 
even though they still hadn't found her, they said they were confident that she was no longer alive. Um, he had dumped the backpack in the comp- the school laptop in the dumpster at 7.35 a.m. And the times are important because they contradict with the mom's statements. Now, I guess technically, like, it, it just, the timeline seems too tight. But, but we'll talk about it. So, the mom claimed she last saw her daughter getting ready for school at 8 a.m. But he was dumping her laptop and backpack in the dumpster at 7.35. So what, you're telling me he was dumping her stuff before he killed her? Yeah, that's strange. That doesn't feel... That doesn't seem right. I I don't know much about this case. Um, as you guys know, I, I don't have very much time lately to, to pay attention to uh, additional cases outside of my obsessing over certain ones. But um, yeah, uh, by everything you've just told me, I already feel like the mother needs to be looked at, period. Already. Yeah, she needs to be investigated for sure. Um, and I feel I feel kind of bad, but like because you immediately want to believe like she's a grieving mother and she cares about her daughter. But when you find out like this abuse has been going on under her roof from her boyfriend for multiple years and he has pictures of it on his phone and you're claiming you saw your daughter that morning getting ready but he was dumping her laptop and backpack in the dumpster behind your guys's apartment a whole half an hour earlier um and that we took her to school but then later you say it was actually him taking her to school but you were giving this impression that it was both of you yeah so this whole time human beings tend to exaggerate there's no way around that we all do it uh it, it's just an outcome of emotion um and in a situation like that you wouldn't over exaggerate to try and hide things you would under exaggerate so what i would expect to see is if you know in a situation like that you would be giving earlier times like to make it seem worse, right? So there's more urgency to find her, not not trying to pad yourself because the concern in that statement is on themselves, not her daughter. So yeah, right away, the mom needs to be looked into. I agree. I agree completely. Um, and her interview, I'd be really curious to see what you think of her interview. I wanted to play a piece of it um, because I've heard a lot of people watching that interview say she just seems afraid. Like she doesn't seem like she's grieving. Um, and it's hard to judge somebody's grief, you guys. So I don't think you can base it like her, the way she's behaving solely on the way she's acting. The her behavior um i think you have to look at the evidence and this evidence of what she claims versus what the truth like what objective video evidence says is is really what makes me question her that much more the her interviews were already a little weird and i honestly just thought well this guy could be abusive to her or something so she could just be going along with the narrative he's told her to say yeah. And it could still be the case that, you know, she wants to believe him and this is what he's telling her happened. I mean, you that's know? some very extreme, dangerous, toxic it is. codependence that unfortunately still needs to be held accountable. There, Based on those two things, those two times you told me, uh, that's enough for, I think, her to catch charges, in my opinion. Yep. That's mm-hmm. prioritizing him over her. And uh, you were her legal guardian. Uh, I don't care how long the boyfriend's been there. You were her mother. Um, there are certain expectations that come along with that. And I I, I personally just don't have any... Um, I don't have any gray area or room for understanding in those situations. Sorry. Like, yeah. that, that's... 
It's a good point. That's just part Me of too. being a parent. It is. It is. Um, so her body was finally discovered March 1st um, on a wooded area off Hickory Tree Road in Osceola County. In Osceola County. Um, then March 2nd, the boyfriend waived his first appearance in court and he refused to appear in court. He refused to cooperate. Okay. He has not been cooperative whatsoever. And County Sheriff Marcos Lopez posted a crime scene photo of Maddie on Instagram. Now I know what everyone's thinking right now. What? It's true. Um, he did. However, the post was meant to be about a situation like something they were doing at a senior citizen's home. And he was posting pictures of that on his Instagram. And he accidentally clicked on one of the crime scene. My question is, though, why is he taking pictures of the crime scene with his cell phone? Dude, I we've already talked about this with the Idaho 4. There is a I don't think cops should be allowed to use their personal phones for duty at all. You should not be taking pictures of evidence or crime scenes or IDs. Or IDs. Yeah. I'm Agreed. sorry. There needs to be a law against it. I don't think it's acceptable. That's people's private confidential information. That's crime scene evidence. You cannot just have it on your personal phone. Yeah, most cops are wearing a police belt where you're carrying like 10 pounds around your waist. What is an extra phone? Come on. Come yeah, on. Yeah. So, I, I mean, th he apologized and everything. It's being investigated. I just don't think he should have been taking pictures with his personal phone. And I, if that is something that's regularly happening in um, the police force, it needs to stop. It needs to stop. There, it has to be addressed. Like, that is not acceptable. Because like that, accidents happen. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't think that cop should be fired or anything, no, but I do, do it think he purpose. should be held accountable. Those yeah. are two different things. Accountable Agreed. doesn't necessarily mean you lose everything, but it does mean you made a mistake and you deserve some trouble. Yeah, I absolutely agree. But yeah, so it's being investigated. Um and they released court records that officially said that, you know, he was accused, the boyfriend was accused of um, sexually abusing Maddie for years. Um, and it was just, they made it official, basically. Um, and they're continuing to investigate her death. Um, and there's really no additional information other than that. Uh, we're pretty much up to date here. Um, what an animal. He is an animal and it's disgusting. And clearly he had something to do with it. I just don't know if the mother does too. Um, one thing that I question big time is why, like school lets out at like 3 p.m. Why did it take her till eight? She said she just drove around to like her mom's work and stuff to see if Maddie was there. You said this is totally not like her and she's never done this before. Dude, if that was totally not like my kid and she's never done this before and, you know, she forgot her cell phone at home that day. OK, that's another thing is that Maddie didn't take her phone to school, which we know she was already dead now. But the mom was saying, oh, that's that's like Maddie. She has ADD and she forgets things. She's very forgetful. That didn't strike her out of the ordinary. Um, supposedly, she was also on the spectrum, but then another doctor said that Maddie's not on the spectrum, so she was kind of confused about Maddie's diagnosis with that. She said, but yeah, she it's had some trauma from abuse. Right, right, <laughs> exactly. Um, she said, but socially, Maddie was great, which doesn't really fit autism, but or the spectrum. Um, but, I mean, it strikes me as odd that she, again, the time frame in the morning that she says she saw Maddie 8 getting ready for school, but, you know, her boyfriend was already dumping Maddie's stuff. And then she doesn't call police until, what, is that five hours? Five yeah. hours? 
after she knows her daughter's missing? Yeah. Sounds like a problem to me. Like, what were they doing? I don't know. Just driving around? Like, why not just call police? I agree. And let I them agree. know, like, my daughter's missing. It, it would only take probably, like, 30 minutes of being, like, panicking and then being like, okay, maybe I should call the cops because she doesn't seem to be at any of her friend's house. Like, it takes two seconds to start picking up the phone calling friends. And right. then realizing, okay, she's not at any friend's house. I like, agree. I 30 mean, minutes tops. My Within 30 minutes, I would have called the school and then would have found out. She that talked they to the teacher. Oh, dude, I would have called right away then. There's no excuse. She did call the school right away. And uh, well, yeah, I her mom, called 911 the school, right away after. She never school. showed up to school. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Mm hmm. Yeah. Why? My mom needs to be investigated. I don't yeah. know what other people are saying online. I, I, that doesn't matter to me. The mom needs to be investigated. It makes you wonder, did she know all this time this was going on? I don't know. It's sad. It's sad that uh, for something like this to come out, you know, the child had to lose their life. That's really unfortunate and depressing. It is. It's super depressing, but I just wanted to get your impression of um, her demeanor when she is doing this interview. Jen, go ahead and tell us what's going on with Maddie. Well, um, Monday morning, we took her to school. We dropped her off close to school across the street from a church, which is very, it's right next to the school. Um, she crossed the street. Um, and walked to school, what we thought walked to school. Um, my boyfriend who drove her to school walk, drove away at that point. Um, it was seen on video footage that she hung out in the parking lot of the church for a few minutes and then got up and walked towards the school. But she never made it from that walk from, and that was around 9 a.m. when she got up. Uh, she never made it to school after that. Um, it's right next to the school. I don't know why she didn't make it. I don't know if something happened on her walk along the way or if she got taken, but she never made it. And that um, was the last anyone seen of her or heard from her? Yes. Um, I went to pick her up after school um, and she wasn't there. Um, so I started driving around, trying, maybe thinking she took a walk. Maybe she decided to walk to my mom's office, which is pretty close to the school as well. I drove around and I didn't see anything. I drove back to the school. The school was closed. I emailed one of her teachers. They confirmed that she was absent all day. At that point is when I called 911 because I realized something was truly wrong. Um, Have you heard from like any of her friends? Has she been active on any social media? She hasn't been active on social media. None of her chats, none of her games. Uh, we did contact all her friends. None of them had seen her Monday or heard from her. Um, yeah, there's no update. Uh, and I have to ask this, and I know I, I hate doing it, but is she the type that would run away? Has this happened in the past or anything? Has she ever threatened to, to run away? Never. She's never, ever mentioned anything like this before, and she's not the type to want to do this. Um, she did accidentally leave her phone on Monday, um, which is kind of normal for her. She's got ADHD and very forgetful. Um, so she left her phone at home, so there's no way to trace her. They tried tracing her school laptop, um, but that's off, so it's not pinging to anything. Jen, what what is your fear? I know you mentioned she's on games and stuff. Do you think she could have like met somebody and tried to meet up with them? From, she's open to us. She's open with us about you know if she's got a crush with anyone, and she told us she had a crush on someone at school. Um, and I looked at their messages; nothing was weird. I looked at all of her messages, all of her deleted messages; nothing seemed weird. It didn't seem like she was talking to anyone. Um, so I don't feel like that's the case. I feel like she may have been taken um, because this is not like her at all to just disappear and not tell us, not let us know where she's going or who she's with. Um, yeah. What, what are you getting from law enforcement? I mean, are they actively searching for her? I mean, what, what happens now? I mean, especially that she doesn't have her phone with her. Um, so as far as I know, they're conducting a search around the school, behind the school. There's a shingle Creek. There's a, a wooded path area that you could walk. Uh, it's a hiking path. They are going back there with their canine dogs. Uh, they've taken a piece of her clothing to see if they can trace her scent. Um, they're also taking their own vehicles. I'm not sure what type of vehicles, but they're going into the woods to search for her. Um, but I don't feel like that's going to find anything right now. We've had people all day on that trail sending us photos to see if anything there looks familiar and like her personal belongings and nothing is hers. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure where to go from here. I'm just contacting the news to get the word out, to get some help because I'm desperate. I, I'm a wreck right now. So you think that she's been taken against her will? I do think so, yes. As a mom, you know, what is your, what's your mother's intuition telling you right now? I'm trying to hope for the best, but... I'm just, I'm scared for her. I want her to be okay. I want her to be safe. I don't want to, I don't want her to come back harmed. 
I, I just, I just want her back. Whatever that means, just, I just want her back. Are you getting any updates from law enforcement? I mean, yes, they're searching that small area, but have they gotten any hits on any scent or anything like that? They haven't let me know anything. They haven't updated me since I spoke to them this morning. I've contacted them to get some information or to give them some leads, but I've heard nothing back. And Jen, there's no way that she just being, you know, a teenager was like, maybe had a fight with you or an argument with you and was like, you know what, I'm going to go hang out at so-and-so's house and teach her a lesson. You know, could that be a scenario? I don't believe so. We actually haven't gotten into a fight in like a few weeks or arguments or anything like that. If anything, on Sunday, she celebrated her 13th birthday with my entire family and she had the best day. She was so happy. She showed us all her gifts. Um, she was, she's just a happy girl and she showed it on, on Sunday night when she went to bed. She was so happy. So, you know, she had the best day. I just, you know, there was no, there was no moment in that evening from when she got home from the party that she had her phone or had the laptop. She went straight to getting ready and went to bed. So I know she didn't have any conversations with anyone. She didn't make plans with anyone. I didn't, I didn't see any of that. But she's yeah. spent the whole Sunday celebrating her 13th birthday. Was her 13th birthday on that Sunday or that was just like the, the time you guys were celebrating? That was the time we were celebrating. Her birthday was on Thursday, the 22nd. Okay, she just so, turned 13. But that's just so heartbreaking to be celebrating her 13th birthday. And then the very next day, she's that's gone. the last you, you see, you've seen her for. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, where, where do you go now? Are you going to go out there and, and search or look or what, what is your, are you sticking by the phone? Are you, you know, what are you doing? I'm staying at home, staying by the phone, hoping she just appears. Um, I know my entire family's out looking. They've all uh, spread a bunch of flyers. They've gone, I've had people contact me that they've gone to the international airport to spread flyers to Amtrak, to Greyhound, just any way that if someone's taken her and they're trying to take her just to show her face, just to make sure, you know, she's not being taken against her will. And you mentioned ADHD. Was there anything else maybe mentally going on or that, that you knew of? Um, she does suffer from anxiety. And once upon a time, she was diagnosed with autism. Uh, we had her re... What's the word? Maybe? Reevaluated. Okay. We had her reevaluated um, a few months ago, actually. And they told us, no, she didn't have autism, but she did have some autistic traits. She did have ADHD, some autistic traits, but not autism. So I'm not sure where to leave with that because one doctor said she did and one doctor saying she doesn't. And I don't know. She's just in the middle, I guess, because she, she does have some tendencies, but socially she's pretty great. So I'm not sure. And with the video that you were able to see whenever your boyfriend dropped her off, where, where was that? What, like, which video? Was that a surveillance camera? It was a surveillance camera from the church, uh, Peace Church, right next to Med uh, Hunter's Creek Middle School. And do you have that video? I don't have that. Um, okay. They didn't show me. They wouldn't show me. It was actually, they, they, my sister was the one at location and they were letting her know what they saw on camera. Okay. Uh, they didn't show it to any of us. Got it. Okay. Jen, is there anything else that you'd like to, to add? <sighs> please, 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 if you have any information, contact me, contact law enforcement. Um, any, any information helps. Um, Maddie, if you see this, please come home. Please be safe. I love you very much. If you have my Maddie, please just let her come home. We just want her home. I dropped her off. The other thing looked fine when I drove away. So last time we saw her. What were the conversations that you had in the car when you dropped her off? Not much. She was asleep for most of the way. I told her have a good day at school when she got out. I love her. I said, thanks. Love you too. That was it. And so where, where do you think she could possibly be? I mean, this isn't, as I was told, this isn't normal behavior. This is not normal behavior. She's not the type that would just run off. We don't know where she could be. We're scared. We just want her home. Are you, in a sense, blaming yourself? It's hard not to. It just keeps coming in waves. This is the reality keeps hitting. We don't know where she is. We don't know if she's safe. We're just scared. We just want her home. Conflicting reports here and there. People say they see this or that. None of it's conclusive and none of it's helpful. We just want a baby girl back. I don't know if you guys found it interesting like I did, but uh, to me, both of their emotions come off uh, not sincere. Well, the the boyfriend comes off overly emotional like he's literally faking it not to me um i don't see it no he's crying the yeah, whole time i understand that but it does not come off as sincere to me that's what i'm saying it seems like he's faking the emotion like yeah. he's he's crying and overdoing it um like significantly um but maybe he's just crying because he he knows his life's over i don't know <laughs> um but the mom seems like, I don't know, she just seems so afraid. And a lot of the things she said end up not really lining up or sounding quite right after. And, you know, I I feel I feel bad even thinking that way. But the thing is, is sometimes moms do look the other way. Sometimes moms 
get so wrapped up in a toxic relationship, they forget they're a parent. They forget. They forget that they care even about their kids sometimes. Yeah, I don't think there's any reason. We don't need to attach a reason why it could happen. But evidence and history proves that it happens. And I think that's why it's important for the police to look into it. Because there is objective evidence as to why the mom needs to be looked into. Could some of those things that we just looked at be explainable? Sure. Maybe they're explainable. Maybe the mom's just super bad with explanations. Maybe, uh, n not this situation, but like other situations, maybe English isn't the first language. Maybe like there's a million reasons why someone could say one thing, but they meant another and that doesn't make them guilty. But the mom needs to be investigated heavily into phones, into uh, interviews with the boyfriend into as much as they can possibly look into as a suspect. That's the only way we're going to know because a, a human being that, that can allow something like this to happen is not allowed to be out free in, you know, our society. So, and yeah. I think most people would agree with that. Honestly, I bet you anything, the cops are looking into her. Um, there's just enough that doesn't line up. Um, and I think that's fair enough to say. Um, but, you know, if the cops look into it and decide she knew nothing about it. All right. At least they looked into it, you know. Yeah. I hope she has an explanation, though. Yeah. Because the times, they don't really add up. They really don't. Um, but I want to know what you guys think um, about her interviews and about the information that she gave and how it contradicts with what the evidence actually says. Um, yeah, just what do you think? I I want full justice for Maddie, even if that means her mom goes down too. Like if her mom had anything to do with it, she has it coming. Yes.